Uh, if you have a question for Kevin, go ahead and use the raise hand tool. Uh, for those just joining us, if you need access to record, just send me a note in the chat window. Uh, Kevin, your first question will come from Royal Howell. Go ahead, Royal. Good morning, Coach. How we doing? Royal, good morning. Coach, there is a saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. The fact of the matter is, in the second half, DJ Burns was just unstoppable. 10 to 15 from the field, 23 points in the second half. Just speak on his emergence in your program and just how dominant he's been, just a next play mentality, never give up, playing both sides of the floor. What has he meant to the NC State basketball program? Well, Royal, first of all, he's a, a dinosaur when it comes to today's center. And what I mean by that is very rarely do you have guys today who doesn't mind playing with their back to the basket. And, you know, most of the centers, even in our league, outside of a couple teams, you know, most of these guys are face up guys or pick and pop three guys, which is nothing wrong with that. Um, but he gives us the ability uh, or he gives us something that, you know, we probably haven't had in a long time. And many people in college basketball, the ability to score with your back to the basket where you can throw the ball inside. And then, you know, he's a trusted passer. He, you know, he really finds people, um, you know, what a tremendous game he had at you know, at Wake and, you know, he's had some really good games for us in the NC State uniform, but that's probably his best one so far. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Uh, I'll go next to Corey Smith. Go ahead, Corey. Kevin, first of all, hope you're having a good morning. Wanted to uh, check with you on this coming up Wednesday's game. Obviously, you guys face off with the Florida State team that's been playing you know, better basketball recently. Uh, is it kind of a similar scenario to last week where you went on the road to Georgia Tech and you said afterwards, you know, play the team, not the record, right? Oh, 100%, Corey. The, I mean, they, they're good. I mean, I think if you, if you, anybody in this league would to, to look at their record and say, we're playing against a team that's seven and 15, I think that's a huge mistake. I mean, you know, all you got to do is look at um, the Clemson game this past weekend and, you know, them going on the road and winning at Pitt. I mean, they're they're really good, uh, and it's unfortunate um, because you know obviously they're going to get heavily penalized for what happened in November, and December with a a lot of injuries, and then obviously not having you know one of their better players for 16 games. But I mean, this team is as talented as any team that we're going to play in this league, and they can beat anybody on any given night. Um, you know, I'm sitting here watching them um, yesterday and today. Um, I mean, they're really good. I mean, talent, and obviously you guys know that Leonard has done a great job for a lot of years. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Corey. James Henderson, go ahead. Hey, Coach, hope you're doing well. I, I got two quick ones for you. I know uh, Royal asked you earlier about DJ. I I'm interested in your take. How do you view him? Do you view him as a scorer or a playmaker? Well, he was a playmaker on, on Saturday. Um, you know, I just – I think he's really just an unselfish player that has, you know, has gotten better in a lot of areas. Um, you know, one of the things for DJ is here is trying to get in the best shape that he could to be able to play. You know, a lot of, we talked about him scoring, but nobody's talked about he's played, he played 33 minutes and was very effective in that game. Um, I, I think he's both. I think his ability to, to score the basketball with a soft touch, but it was, I was telling the staff this morning, we don't run Princeton offense, but it's almost like we had to run the offense through him with all of the foul trouble that we had. And, you know, he, you know, won't have a lot of assists, um, but he's got the one that he does have or the two that he does have was very, very effective. And so I, you know, he passes the ball, uh, he can score the basketball and very rarely do you see that with someone his size. His size. And, and just my other one, I know um, Dushan and Jack have generally been lumped together from a health standpoint, just coming back. I mean, is one maybe a little further along than the other at this point? You know, I, I don't know, James. I mean, like, uh, you know, they both have injuries that are so nagging. Um, you know, Dusan's injury was very similar to what he had last year. And so anytime you do, you injure the same body part a couple of times, it takes a little longer. And then, grow, um, you know, Jack's doing dealing with the groin. And so, you know, both of those guys at any moment could be ready. And then obviously it just takes, you know, a five minute or a different cut a certain way and it can set them back. But I, I don't I don't have a timetable for either one of those guys. You're going to hear rumors or, you know, someone told me, man, Jack's playing against Wake Forest. I was like, well, that's not true because I'm the head coach. I would know that. And um, so you're going to hear that all the way until he plays a game or Dusan plays a game. 
Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Go to Rob McLam. Go ahead, Rob. Hey, Kevin, I have a two-parter as well. It's about transfers. First, what leads you when you're constructing a team to sort of say, okay, I want to add graduate transfers to this group? And then what are the non-basketball skill set in terms of intangibles do you look for from grad transfers? Well, I think transfers are good because it's almost as we know, we don't, we hate to say free agency, but you have the ability now to go out and find guys who completely fit your system. You know, when you're recruiting a, a high school guy, um, you're hoping and wishing that it translates to this level. You know, when transfer with, with the transfer portal, you're able to see them play against other, you know, Division One, two, D Division One teams, Power Five teams, and do they fit in the way that, that that you play, and what can they contribute coming right away? The intangibles is you want guys who, um, you know, have a, a winning mentality. Um, for example, I'll give you an example. You know, getting Jaquel Joyner, um, and I have you know three other guys who I can use as examples also. But you know, we we really hit we hit a home run with this kid because he's a great person. You know, he's very focused. He's good off and off the uh, on and off the court. He's great for your locker room, and so as much research as you can find out, and you're not going to get as much as you would like, just to find out what type of person they are, um, and who you're bringing into your program always goes a long ways. Is it hard to get them to sort of quickly uh, uh, establish, get get that that standard you've established because they've been in an example like with Joiner, he's been four years at Ole Miss, and this is something new. Is, is or was he quick to the game? Well, our system fits the way Jaquel wanted to play, and I think it it was a perfect storm for him. You know, when we lost Darion Sebron, you know, with his ability to come in and know that he had the opportunity to start right away in a system where he could play free and be able to take a lot of shots and, you know, kind of, you know, get up and down. And, you know, he, if I had to say a point guard, he reminds me, you throw back a couple of years ago when we had Markel Johnson, who could really get after you defensively, but had a lot of freedom. And he's kind of fit that role from a basketball standpoint. Uh, we'll go back to Royal Howell. Go ahead, Royal. Coach, since January 7th, in one possession games in the final minute, your team is 4-0, I believe. What's been the biggest aspect, in your opinion, in your team's ability to not just fall under pressure, but rise to the occasion? When it's time to play ball, it's time to... For a question, uh, Saturday after the game, I can't remember if it was Jarkel or DJ was asked about what were some of the factors that led them to think that NC State was a good fit for them. And, and he said, the guys that are around me, the, you know, these other guys that I'm playing with, how much do your players um, factor into when you're recruiting a transfer? I think it's huge. Um, you know, uh, you, you think about this team, Brett, we, we knew we had uh, T back. We knew we had Ernest. We had Greg. We had um, Breon and Casey and EB. And so I think, you know, when we when we bring guys on campus, we want those guys to be able to interact with those guys also. And then transfers are smart. I mean, they, they go out and they do their homework. And, you know, if you get one guy, it leads to another and understanding how this guy plays. Uh, but I think it's important. Uh, I, I'm I'm now, you know, obviously after being here, I think it's so much more important that these guys have a relationship off the court because I think it leads to, you know, playing well on the court. And, you know, with this group, you know, I think one of the things that helped us is we were able to take a trip to Bahamas and, you know, they didn't know each other, but being able to get together, hang out, have some fun, play some basketball. And um, I think that brought them together. So I think that, you know, when you go out there and you get transferred, I think it's important that they feel comfortable because, I mean, you essentially are bringing in maybe five or six guys or the independent contractors, and you got to get them all on the same page. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Brett. Uh, we'll squeeze one more quick one in from David Teal. Go ahead, David. Kevin, DJ took 26 shots on Saturday. That's 10 more than he's ever taken in a game this season. 
even as recently as two weeks ago. Could you have envisioned him getting 26 up in a game? I got every post guy's AAU coach calling me right now. <laughs> hey, Kevin Keats, just so you know this for the record, anybody that says he's, he's, a, he's a guards coach, I want everybody to understand that my post guy took 26 <laughs> shots in a game. I can always say that. Just remember that part of it now. Um, I was He was amazing. It's, it's funny because – in the day's time, and, and I told somebody uh, earlier that, you know, throwing the ball inside and a guy gets 26 attempts and never takes a three and never get in transition, um, man, that means a lot. So, you know, he he's tired the next day. He was tired yesterday. He's probably going to act like he's tired today. And I'm going to tell him if you're tired today on Wednesday, you only get five <laughs> attempts. So, you know. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, everyone. Kevin, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Bye-bye. All right, we will bring